Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing GoDaddy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 15 billion market cap, they're trading at 108 a share and they have 141 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they're always cash flow positive. It peaked in 2022 over 900 million. It's a little under 900 million in the trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. Negative in 2020 due to write downs. Then positive after that. Revenue is the sales of the company and that grows a little bit each year from 3.3 billion to 4.2 billion. A nice growth in 2021 of 15%, but very minimal growth after that. <laughs> We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 23 billion. We discounted the numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $20 billion. We divide that by 141 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 145. They're trading at 108, so they're trading at a 25% discount. It's a nice buy according to the model. There are 146 companies in the same industry as GoDaddy, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They don't spend much in CapEx, 55 million, a lot less than the average. We can't look at their debt to equity ratio since they have negative equity. When a company has negative equity, that means its liabilities are higher than its assets. We'll look at their balance sheet later. They don't pay a dividend. They generate a lot of free cash flow, more than the average. They rank 19th in market cap. We can't look at that price to book, negative equity. The denominator of the equation, the bottom, is book value, equity. Their PE is between the median average, really nice price to free cash flow, better than the median average. A good price of sales, a little worse than the median, a lot better than the average. They generate lots of revenue, 4.2 billion. Their five year annual revenue growth rate is okay at 10%, nothing special. Let's take a look at the most recent 10Q. This is the third quarter of 2023, third quarter of 2022, the last three quarters of 2023, the last three quarters of 2022. We'll start off with their income statement. The top line of the income statement is their revenue. It was about 1.1 billion in the third quarter of 2023, a little more than last year in the third quarter of 2022. Applications and commerce, 360 million, core platform, 706 million. Whenever I built websites, I always went through GoDaddy. Of the 1.1 billion of revenue, 700 million US, 345 million outside the US. They have lots of different services, but the service I use was when I built a website and I paid them an annual fee to host a website. I think it was only like 100, $150 a year. Below revenue is their expenses. Cost of revenue, 400 million. These are the costs directly tied to generating the revenue. The indirect costs are technology and development, 200 million, marketing, 86 million, customer care, 76 million, GNA, 92 million. So total expenses, 900 million, operating income, 167 million, up from 130 million. Their net income is 131 million. Their EPS is 90 cents, up from 64 cents last year. And they're buying back shares, lots of shares. They had 156 million shares outstanding last year, and now they have 145 million. Let's look at their balance sheet. Current assets of 1.2 billion, current liabilities of 2.6 billion. So their current ratio is well below one. That's a little concerning. They're gonna need to add some debt to get through the next 12 months. Their total assets, six and a half billion. Their biggest asset by far is Goodwill, 3.5 billion. Their largest acquisition, was in 2016 when they acquired Host Europe. That was for 1.8 billion. Here's a list of their acquisitions. Most of them are pretty small, so they don't list a dollar amount. Loku was 70 million. Freedom Voice, 42 million. Here's Host Europe, 1.8 billion. Another big one was Point, 365 million. But a lot of acquisitions are tiny. Their total assets are down from December 2022. It was 7 billion, now it's 6.5 billion. Long-term debt is their biggest liability, 3.8 billion. 
Here's a breakdown of the 3.8 billion. 725 million interest rate 4.3%, 1.8 billion interest rate 4.1%, 600 million interest rate 5.4%, and 800 million interest rate 3.6%. When you take their assets minus their liabilities, you get their equity. They have negative equity, negative 1 billion. They raised 2.2 billion from selling their business. They lost 3.3 billion from running their business. If they didn't buy back so much stock, they wouldn't have an accumulated deficit. If they had an accumulated deficit and did not buy back any stock, this would be a big red flag. But that's not the case with this company. Let's look at their statement of cash flows. This is for the trailing nine months. The statement of cash flows has three sections, operating cash flow, investing cash flow, and financing cash flow. For the trailing nine months, net income of 260 million. This is their accounting profit. But they generated 750 million of cash because they had 130 million of depreciation and amortization and 227 million of stock-based compensation. Also a cash inflow of 170 million from deferred revenue. An example of deferred revenue is when a customer prepays for a year up front. Like if you created a website through GoDaddy and they charge you 200 bucks each year. They cannot record the $200 of revenue right away. They record it over 12 months. They put the $200 on the balance sheet as a liability and record $16.67 a month. So in the first nine months, they had a cash inflow of 170 million from these upfront subscriptions. In their investing section, they spent 38 million of PP&E. In their financing section, they added 1.8 billion of debt. They bought back 1.1 billion of their own stock. Last year, 1.1 billion. So you can see they buy back lots of stock and they repaid 1.8 billion on a term loan. Let's look at the stock on Simply Wall Street. It's last price 108, 15 billion market cap, flat in the past week, up 31% in the past year. Let's see what they say about the company. GoDaddy engages in the design and development of cloud-based products in the US and internationally. It has two segments, applications and commerce and core platform. The applications and commerce segment provides application products, including websites and marketing, a mobile optimized online tool that enables customers to build websites and e-commerce enabled online stores and also manage WordPress, a streamlined and optimized hosting platform that allows customers to build and manage a faster and more secure WordPress site. And that's offered with WooCommerce to sell online. Also marketing tools and services such as GoDaddy Studio mobile application SEO, Meta and Google My Business listings, and email and social media marketing designed to help businesses acquire and engage customers and create content. The segment also offers connected commerce comprising Smart Terminal, a dual screen all-in-one point of sale system that allows customers to manage in-store inventory and product catalogs and take payments. GoDaddy Payments, a payment facilitator that enables customers to accept all major forms of payment and email service plans with multi-feature web interface. Also, Microsoft Office 365 accounts that connect to customers' domain. The core platform segment offers domain products including primary registrations, domain aftermarket platform, and domain name add-ons, as well as GoDaddy Registry, a provider of domain name registry services, and hosting and security services comprising shared website hosting, website hosting on virtual private servers, and virtual dedicated servers, and managed hosting services, as well as security products with a comprehensive suite of tools designed to help secure customers' online presence. They serve small businesses, individuals, organizations, developers, designers, and domain investors. Incorporated 10 years ago in 2014, headquartered in Tempe, Arizona. You can see the stock has done really well since they IPO'd in 2015. It had a really nice run up from 2015 to 2018. Then it was pretty much flat from 2018 to 2023. The past four months it had a really nice surge, up almost 50%. Simply Wall Street's valuation is 130. They say the stock is 17% undervalued. 16 analysts priced this stock at 112. Their revenue forecast for 2024 is 4.5 billion, 2025 5 billion, 2026 5.3 billion. Do you think it'll hit these revenue targets? The red line is their debt, and you can see their debt is always higher than their equity. Now their equity is negative, so that's why they have a negative debt to equity ratio. This green line is their cash. They do have some cash on their balance sheet, but not nearly enough to pay down their debt. Maybe it's a good stock to short. 
The CEO salary is one million. Total compensation, nineteen million. Tenure as CEO is four point three years. In the past year, there's been lots of insider selling, some buying, but mostly selling, as you can see here. In the past year, three million insider shares were sold, half a million purchased. Ninety-three percent of the companies held by institutions, five percent by hedge funds, one and a half percent by the general public. The biggest shareholders: BlackRock, then Vanguard Capital Research, Janus, Starboard. Starboard is a hedge fund in New York City. Eaton Vance, Fidelity, J.P. Morgan, Geode, Norgus Bank, First Trust Advisors, Schwab, Douglas Lane, Wellington. Their employee count is up a little bit: 4,400 in 2013, 6,900 in 2023. The ticker trades in a few places, the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, Mexican Bolsa, and Sao Paulo Bolsa. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel. You can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.